Hey guys, here are 10 facts that most keywords probably don't use for 3x3, which will probably make them faster. Okay, I'm going to keep this short and simple. Number one, not using inspection time. So whenever anyone scrambles a cube, the first thing they always do is inspect the cube. So that way they can plan out the cross, do some stuff. That way they'll know what to do so they won't pause. So if they finish something and they have to pause to look around, yeah, I think you get it. So one of the most common mistakes is not using inspection time. So most people, they just see like one, maybe two, and then they just start and do it. And in the middle of the way, they just pause to look and then they lose really inefficient cross. And sometimes you can even do an F2 up air during inspection. So this is an example of how people who don't use inspection will be like. Yeah, like that. But when people actually use instruction, this is how it'll be. Yes, I messed that up, but I think you get the point. Yeah, like that. Okay, so next fact. I just realized I called it a fact. Why fact? Okay, so next, the next Ooh. tip Ooh. is control. Uh, turning faster than you can control. So, for example, if you want to do this really fast, if you one person would do, they would try to do that, and that way they could get corner twist or they could overshoot. So. What you actually should do is you turn as fast as you can control. So turn slowly, but as turn as fast as you can, but not as fast as you can, huh? as fast as you can that you can control. Like that. So that way you can also look ahead, which I'll be coming to next. Here's how it look like if I turn faster than I can control. Okay, coming to the next one is not looking ahead. This is the most common problem that most beginner tubers don't use. So, looking ahead is basically when you turn slow, that way you can see what's coming next. So, if I'm turning slow, I can see that the, pair, the cross pieces are here, so I can immediately go into it. And during F2, it's the most efficient. So, when I'm doing this, I might be able to see these two. And then I can immediately go into that. And then, since it's not here, it has to be there. I can do that. And then... Yeah. And then I can do this. And then you can even predict which all when you're doing this. And then immediately cancel out into it. Same thing you can do with the PLL. Here's an example of a solve without, without look ahead. And here's an example of a solve with look ahead. Okay, the next
next one is a thing which which is very easy to do, but most people don't do it, which could definitely speed up your solves. So let, let's take an example. I do the cross, and over here, I I pick it until the last slot. Over here, what most people would do is rotate and then do it. But then, for most cases, you can just solve it from the back, like this. You don't need rotating at all, because rotating slows out down your solves. One rotation takes a long time to do, in speed, speed cubing. So, let's take another one. Do the cross again. And over here, if I do my F girl. And over here, most people do is rotate, then solve it. But what you can actually do is, for this case as well, what most people do is rotate and then insert it. But what you can actually do is just pretend that you're looking at it from the back. So if you're over there, you would do this, and that does the same thing. So that's a neat handy trick to use, which will definitely speed up your falls. Okay, for the next one, I understand why most people don't do it. It's pretty complicated, but it's sol solving the cross in under eight moves. So this cross, most people probably do something like this, and then they do this, and then they do that. But an easier solution is, for example, this cross. You can easily just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, 8 moves, so you can pretty much do this almost every cross unless you have a, a really bad cross, that that means you're just unlucky. This cross, you can do it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, let's take one more, this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and sometimes you can even get an X cross and do that. And speaking about solving the cross in under 8 moves, cross efficiency is one of the most important parts of the solve. It starts off the solve, so if you don't do if you don't do your cross efficiently, you just ruin the solve. So for example this one, you before inserting it, you see if you can do anything else easier. So instead of doing this, what you can see is these two are opposite, so you do R2, B2. And then if you match this up and do insert it, you can do the same thing, and you even have an opportunity for an X cross. So, maybe that was a bit new here, but once more, if you have a cross over here, instead of taking it out, inserting it, and then doing the other one, what you actually do is first put it inside, even if it's the wrong color. Then, if you have another hard color here, Green is always opposite to blue, so put it there. They match up these opposites. Then you can do D2 to align them with the cross. Then you can do R2. And then you can insert this last one. So what I did there was actually not moving the pieces, but moving the cross. So I already had one in place. I saw the other ones, move the cross D2, and then I inserted it. So sometimes you just move the cross, not the pieces. This next one is also one more thing that most people don't know. It's pretty advanced. But this is called PLL recognition. M many of you know PLL recognition, but it's just hard to get good PLL recognition. So for example, if you're doing this, and if you do it, some you might pause for a second and think this is an apron, but when from this angle it looks like an apron, but when you see this block over here, you have to understand that it's a G perm. So there's a whole bunch of other things you can do. So for example, if I have a case like this u maybe for example. This, if you're looking from this, it could also be a u from this angle. So then you'll just have to slightly tilt to the side and then you can continue the algorithm. Let's take one more example. Maybe the z -perm. So 
let's say you just finish your cross, I mean your Ola, and then you do this. This Z perm, there, there could be, if you look at it from this, it, if you see this but not this, you could think it's an R perm, but when you slightly tilt it, you can see the only um, PLL that has two colors, two colors adjacent to each other, is the Z perm. So then you continue with the algorithm. Nope. The ninth tip is not practicing enough. I am guilty of this. I just pick up the cube when I'm bored. So, for example, when I'm watching TV, I just do random albums on it. Albums on it. Just practicing. I don't actually do it for solve. I don't time myself. I don't do anything. I just do it for fun. Sometimes I need to find the same algorithm again and again. So that is a bad routine. So whenever you have time, what you have to do is take your stack my timer or your laptop or something, open CS timer, then do your scrambles, do your solves, and then keep practicing until you get better and better at your solves. And and then when you're advanced enough, learn new things like CLL or ZBLL, and then eventually you get faster and faster. And you notice significant improvement when you started practicing more. And the last tip is the most important, subscribing to Cuba Squad. This will make you faster immediately. Well, I'm just kidding, but hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please go subscribe if you like the video. I think you like one more of our other videos. I'll leave them linked somewhere over here. And until then, goodbye.